Hey guys, well today uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a sort out. It's still 2016 and we're coming to the end of it. So I wanted to make sure that my workshop was sorted out. It's been probably about two years since I last had a clear out. And as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff. Uh, and it's all just in sort of boxes and plastic containers and nothing is now organized. It's all fallen out of uh, organization. So to start with, I've got several of these uh, sort of trays, uh, these sort of storage trays. And all I've been doing is just throwing bits in there as I've got them. And what I need to do is take everything out of these, categorize it into, um, I don't know what it might be. It might be modules, sensors, it might be components. So uh, capacitors, uh, passives basically. And then we've got ICs, logic, might look at having a specific CMOS one. Uh, and I've also got a, uh, a large, sort of uh, tray organizer stand up thing uh, and I don't make any use of it. So I've got loads of these drawers, but don't really use them. So I'm going to be moving everything across. And I thought as I do that, I can pull out any interesting bits to show you. So this is a prime example of one of my little boxes. Uh, and it really does show you how much I just throw things in these just uh, for temporary storage. Now, uh, we've got some 3.5 millimeter audio jacks there. We've got, uh, that's a stepper motor driver, a little module that's got uh, some seven segment displays on it or little uh, four uh, digit displays. So it's like a clock really. God, there's a, a little joystick module. There's all sorts in here. These look like they're, what oh, it says on them, 4017 ICs, they're SMD versions. Little solar panels, all sorts of stuff. So. I'm going to go through all this, try and categorize it, and I'll talk about some of the interesting stuff that I find in here. As a side note, uh, you may recognize some of these things as I go through as being things that have popped up in post bags that I've done. So these are PAM 8403 modules, and I didn't ever use them. Uh, so lots of these, the reason these are packed full of stuff that perhaps hasn't been used is because they get lost in a box and then that little project never happens because it's not in front of my eyes or in an easily organized place. So I think this is gonna sort my life out, my hobby life out, I think. So that is the first one successfully emptied. And I thought I'd, uh, for each one of these boxes, just quickly go through at the end what it is we've got out of it. So first off, I'm gonna categorize these as sensors. Uh, we've got some electric microphones. I'd sort of forgotten I had those. That was for a project uh, relating to uh, a a decibel meter, so an SPL meter. Uh, I've got a single touch sensor, and I'm sure I had more of these, I just don't know where they are. And I did have a project for them, but uh, that never got started because I misplaced them uh, and immediately forgot. So I've got those there. Uh, this is a TWP36GZ, which is a temperature sensor. So it's uh, an analog out one. It does all the calculations inside the chip. So you throw in five volts, uh, 3.3 to five volts, and then you get an analog output. Uh, I think it's 50 millivolts per uh, 0.1 degrees centigrade. So uh, I'm using one of those currently in an ESP8266, which is currently outside doing some temperature sensing. Uh, and this is an HMC5883L, which I think is a, um, a compass chip, but I'm not sure. Um, I never got to use it. <laughs> so um, I'll pop that in a, a little sensor drawer uh, so I've got these little drawers. I can pop these things in this. I may need, I mean, I don't know what's in the rest of the boxes. So we may need to find uh, a larger drawer for sensors and things in the future. Um, I also got loads of little connectors out of here. So these are the 3.5 millimeter jacks uh, and we've got a little barrel jack. We've got some of these uh, pin header connectors. What are the, there's a name for those. I can't recall it, but um, a few of those and uh, some of these, uh, these, they're like uh, ways to connect pin headers in. So you could um, pop things in like that, but uh, I can't remember the name for those. They're not headers like these, they're sort of recessed headers as it were. Uh, so there's some of those, an awful lot of uh, jumper wires uh, and I'm forever running out of those. So I'm glad that I found some more. Uh, so I'll need to find somewhere to put those. Uh, a couple of PCBs were in that box as well. So this one is, from my portable Arduino project. So it had an L2 
T1302, which is a boost converter. So that was five volts at 600 milliamps, it says on here. I had a lithium cell that you could put on there and a 100 milliamp charge rate using the Max 1811. Uh, and I got three of those boards, I think. And I didn't populate this one because uh, the board didn't work. So I've just got that lying around now. So I could probably throw it away, but I just can't bring myself to do it. And this one's a little um, SSOP uh, 28 pin adapter for a breadboard. Uh, and that was for uh, an IC that I was using, a PCM2704, which is a uh, little DAC, uh, so a digital to analog converter. So essentially it's a USB sound card. Um, I don't know where to put those yet, so I haven't got a box for them. In fact, do you know what? We can just pop them in there for now and come back to them later when we find some more inevitably. Got a bunch of ICs and I haven't really categorized these yet. I know what they are. Um, there's some 741s in there. There's some 555s and LM358s in there. But um, I'll wait to find more of these because there's bound to be loads. I don't know where I pick all these things up from. I must have bought them all on eBay and then uh, later forgotten about them. Similarly, uh, ones that will get categorized a bit later on um, are all of these uh, small uh, TO92s and uh, I can't remember what they, those are called. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there's some transistors in there. That one's a voltage regulator. So um, we'll sort these out later on, but there's a few of those. Um, some of them, that's a 3904, so they're transistors. I think that's a, an NPN, isn't it? Uh, and so I'll pop those to the side. They can get categorized a bit later. Uh, quite a few capacitors uh, of varying values. So we've got some 100 nanofarad ones. Those are probably 33 picofarad. Very difficult to read. Those might well be 33 picofarad. Those ones are 33. Those could be 22. Um, therefore, uh, timing crystals. Uh, these are just an assorted little packet and some SMD ones. So they've come out of the SMD box that I've got. So, but it doesn't say anything on them. So I'll figure out what they are and then write on the back, I think. And just a, a random axial one that uh, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, so those need to go into a box at some point. Uh, I've got some crystals here. These are uh, sort of your watch crystal type. So I can't, is it 32768? Kilohertz, is that what that one is, I think? And these ones are 12 megahertz. Those are, yeah, 12 megahertz. They're to, for breadboarding, um, 80 mega 328s is what I was using them for, but they work with loads of microcontrollers. Was that what it was for? Or was it for, it may have been for the PCM2704, which I think needed an external crystal of 12 megahertz. I think the 16 megahertz ones were what I was using for um, the 80 mega. Actually, also 12 would work with the CH340G, which is the USB comms, which I was also using. I don't know where they are either. <laughs> I didn't get around to using those. So we've got some crystals and they'll need to go into uh, a little drawer as well. There's a large bunch of loose resistors, which is such a pain to figure out what they are. Um, I'm not good at reading the codes. Um, my eyesight's also going to get worse <laughs> as I get a bit older, but um, my memory's even worse now. So I can't remember what any of these mean. So I'm going to rig up uh, a jig to put these in uh, to read what values they are. And since I can see that a lot of them are the same, I mean, I can just sort them quite quickly. But for now, they're just going to have to sit in a big pile with other resistors I'm sure I'll pull out. There were some, what I'm calling modules, uh, just because there's sort of a sorted uh, modules here. So we've got these little analog joysticks. This is a, a DS1307, uh, I think it is. It's uh, an art a real time clock. Got this little uh, four segment, four digit display, seven segment. Um, a little motor driver there. It's a stepper motor driver. And some PAM 8403s. Oh, and also a, a little USB uh, boost module, which takes in. Uh, 0.9 volts, I think, and it will kick out up to five at varying um, uh, levels of current. So that's, I'm not sure what that's doing in there. I do have an area for those already, so they'll have to go in into one of these boxes. In fact, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of these modules, so they might just end up in here, not sorted.
there was a ton of switches. Uh, so we've got lots of these little two pole uh, momentary push buttons. Now I made a video on these because I think they're really amazing for breadboarding work. Uh, better than these four pin ones, uh, four leg ones. Uh, so I really like those, but there was also lots of these uh, uh, sort of uh, single pole double throw switches, some of these momentary push button ones, which are really nice because they can screw into uh, enclosures and things, but some really odd, odd ones. Uh, very large momentary switches and some SMD switches as well. Let's pull one of those out. So some really small SMD ones, which I think I have a footprint for in Eagle, uh, and some dip switches. I can't remember at all what I was going to use those for, but um, these momentary push button ones, I think I've got a footprint for, and I think I've used them on a project before, but it slips my mind. But we've got those as well, and they'll all be going into the, the little switches tray, which may need to expand, because I'm sure I'm gonna find some more things in the future. Uh, next up, we've got some lots of ICs. Um, so we've got some 74HC 595s. We've got the DS2321, is that right? DS2331, which are real-time clock chips. These ones here are 74, no they're not. They are TLC 5940, those are 16 channel PWM drivers. Um, some CD4026s, uh, we've got a bunch of CH340Gs, that's what I was looking for. Uh, in this packet here we've got some 20 pieces of 4017 CMOS chips and we've also got a PCM2704. And there were some diodes in that, in, that, in that little box as well, so some SMD diodes. I'm gonna have to look up the part number for those because I don't remember what I bought them for. Uh, but that was it for the first box. Oh, actually, one more thing. There were also some battery holders in here. So these are TO32, 2032 battery holders and uh, AA battery holder as well. So next up, we've got a box that isn't quite so tightly packed. And I think this one was, well, it's a relatively new one. So it's, uh, I've just been throwing things in. And as you can see, it's not very well organized. Well, that was a fairly uninteresting uh, box because there wasn't an awful lot in it. We just had uh, a couple of these displays, which will go back in that box. This power adapter I'd forgotten I had. Um, <laughs> and I did a little um, review of some power banks recently and that would have come in really handy. Uh, but that will go along with these um, uh, DC to DC boost converters, which give out five volts. Um, I've got several of those. And in fact, there was one in the last box. So we'll put those all together in a power section. Um, there were some NRF 24L01 modules in here and I'd sort of forgotten I had this many. Um, so it'd be useful to get those back up and running. I did have a project going about some wireless temperature sensing and communication to a little hub in my house. Um, and I sort of let that fall along the wayside, so that didn't get finished, but maybe we'll get there. So those can go into a little wireless section. A um, couple of connectors, there was two of these, I think. These are micro SD breakout boards. They were useful for some uh, USB powered projects that I had, and I just wanted to use uh, USB load from a power bank and put it straight into the breadboard. Um, so that can go into a connectors drawer. We've got um, some of these uh, eight, pin headers, uh, and these were used for ESP8266s as well as they were for the um, NRF24L01s. I've used some of these, so um, I didn't know they were around, I just didn't know quite where they were. So those will end up going into the connectors drawer as well, which is getting pretty full by now. There's quite a few things in here. Um, this was in here, which is a little GSM module. Um, I'm not gonna use that, so it's probably gonna end up being thrown away, but I might be tempted to open it up and have a look inside, but it's, uh, it's one of these ones with a weird proprietary connector, or it might not be proprietary, it's certainly not one that I have to hand, it's just a bit too small pitch for me. There was a microcontroller in there that hasn't been opened, <laughs> so I haven't used it. Uh, so that will go in the microcontroller drawer. And these little IC, not ICs, they're, um, Sorry, they're SMD switches. 
Um, and I can't remember if I've got a footprint for those, but they're single throw, no, they're not, they're single pole double throw switches. And I really like the, um, the layout of them. They're horizontal switches. Uh, so you can stick them on the edge of the board of whatever you've designed and their SMD, which is really interesting, um, making laying out boards perhaps easier in some cases, maybe not in others, but uh, I'm glad I found them. Uh, I'll have to check if I've got a layout for those.